Sawyer post surgery and Lauren is sipping apple juice watching the Eros tour. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren and welcome to my endometriosis surgery prep and a surgery vlog. Today is Monday and my surgery is Thursday. So I'm going to be kind of bringing you along through what I'm doing to prepare, giving you like a haul of things that I'm getting, things that like helped me. Personally preparing for the surgery, I automatically went to YouTube to look up other girls experiences and their mindset and like what they were getting to kind of help prepare me. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I know that this is not like my typical New York City girly cutesy type content, but this video is going to be very raw it's going to be very real obviously I'm going to be filming in the hospital and I just want to kind of preface that like I am expecting for it to be more graphic it's not going to be just like oh like lollipops and rainbows like I'm going to be giving it to you straight so just kind of letting you know that it might be a little TMI at times but I'm hoping that if this could just help one girl going through the surgery like that would literally be enough for me I have been giving this platform for a reason and if I can do it to be an advocate for endometriosis that is exactly what I want to do so today I am going to the nail salon and you're probably like Lauren that is not preparing for surgery no it is it is because my anxiety has been at an all-time high but the main thing I'm going for is to get my toes done I personally have cut out that expense from my life I really don't get pedicures that often anymore but I know I'm going to be on bed rest and having like nice polished toes like I think it's just going to help me I want to treat myself to get my toes done and I'm literally just a girl <laughs> also today I'm cleaning up the apartment because I want my apartment to be as clean as possible that way my mind isn't wandering and like I'm wanting to get up and clean things I am deep cleaning and organizing literally everything in here. Highly suggest cleaning before you would get any sort of surgery. So everything is in its place. Everything is good to go. But let's go ahead and head on out to the nail salon. I also stopped to get myself a sweet little treat. <laughs> My nails are off, my toes are done. Now I'm picking up my medication, like my prescriptions that they called in for me to take the day before surgery. Back with my prescriptions. These are just two pills that I have to take the night before my surgery, so I need to go ahead and pick these up. But I wanted to give you a little haul of the things that I got to prepare for my surgery. I also did make an Amazon fresh order today to get delivered tomorrow. So basically, I got like soup, apple juice, sorbet, sherbet, like popsicles, saltines, ginger ale, things that I know I would normally need if I'm not feeling well. Also, because the day before my surgery, I'm going to be on an all liquid diet starting, I think, like at noon or something. So I wanted to go ahead and have things here. I'll be linking these things and making like a little Amazon list in my storefront for you also like if you're going through the surgery. I did get pads while I was out because I will be bleeding after the surgery and I'm not allowed to use tampons two weeks after surgery I think. These are my favorite so I grabbed them while I was at CVS. I also get very nauseous. This is the Dramamine Nausea Long Lasting and then these are Nausea Relief like a natural inhaler. I also got this dial soap and you're probably like what? So this is an antibacterial soap and I have to start cleaning my body with this starting today for my surgery. Um, I hate this soap. I've had to use it before and it literally is like my least favorite thing. Um, we're not gonna have hot girl showers. I also got these two ice packs. I got two just to like keep one in the freezer and then one to like be used and like we can switch them out. But I know that I'm going to be like blown up with gas in my stomach and I've heard that the gas pains like in your chest and shoulders get really bad. So I've seen a lot of girls use like ice packs like this. So I decided to get a pack of two and they're pink so it makes me happy. I also got some fuzzy socks to have just like for recovery in general. One thing I ordered is not here and it is a little nightgown. I'll pop up a picture of it here. I I've heard that in recovery it's better to have a nightgown so you don't have anything like around your hips or your stomach your belly button like where the trauma is going to be but I did buy these pants from Target I wish you could feel these pants these are probably the softest pants I've ever owned before in my life and last but not least this is so weird but I did get postpartum underwear I got the petite ones my belly isn't going to be as big as like it would be like if I was postpartum or something but these are going to be like really soft they're disposable underwear really soft really stretchy like super duper stretchy also because if I get anything on these like I'm not gonna care because you literally just throw them away
so it's the day before surgery and this is the day that I have literally been dreading. I think I was dreading this day more than the actual surgery itself. So you have to do a lot of prep to your body for this surgery and I didn't know that going into it. I also just paid my fee for my surgery. So my surgery, I don't have insurance. Pause before y'all come for me for not having insurance. I'm looking into it, okay? I know. I should have it. We're looking into it with Will's job. It's hard when you're self-employed to get health insurance. It's not as easy as people make it sound. So I'm working on it. They gave me a fee of $9,000 for the surgery, which was so much better than what I was expecting. So I just paid the $9,000 outright straight. Like if anyone else is wondering like how much this is going to cost, but it does not cover like my hospital fees and the anesthesia, anesthesia, anesthesia that I'm going to be getting tomorrow. Um, so that is going to be completely separate and I don't know how much that's going to be. And that's really stressing me out. I don't think I'm going to have to pay that up front. So I'll be able like to like pay it a little bit later or something. Um, I am allowed to have one meal before surgery. I'm allowed to have breakfast. So I made myself like my favorite breakfast at home. It's about to be midday. I did decide to sleep in today because I wanted just to give my body rest and I've just been really, really anxious. So I can eat a high carb diet until midday. Then everything else afterwards is going to be a full liquid diet. They said milkshake, fruit juice, ice cream, clear soup, sorbet. Um, and then I also have to drink a bottle of Ensure tonight, which I've never had and apparently it's really gross. Cannot eat after midnight. And then I have a like whole bowel prep. Like like I said, this is going to be very like TMI. Like this is just going like to get into the like nitty gritty of all of it. Basically I have to drink like a pitcher of this concoction that's going to help like clean my body out. I think I start that at 5 p.m. I take like three pills for it. And then at seven, I start drinking the solution and I have to drink one eight ounce glass every 10 minutes until completed. So let Laugh, love. Then I have to take my gabapentin and then also like another medication that I have to do down there. I'm supposed to experience cramping with it, so I'm hoping that I'll still be able to sleep, even though like I'm probably going to be in pain. It's taking everything in me to eat this. I, I don't want to eat it. Like I, it's just like the point of like my anxiety is like I'm not hungry, but I know I need to eat because I'm going to be hungry later on today and I'm gonna wish I had eaten something. So I'm gonna eat our breakfast and we'll check back in shortly. It has come time for my most dreaded part. Also, this is probably the best I'm going to look this whole entire vlog, which is definitely saying something. So I have to mix. 8.3 ounces of Miralax. I've never taken this before. Someone pull the cameras. What's like a normal dosage on this? One cat full? Oh, it smells. <coughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Who is it? I have to mix it with 64 ounces of Gatorade. I probably will never drink yellow Gatorade ever again. Oh, you just see it sitting at the bottom. Okay, I've been stirring this for like five minutes. I just can't think about what's in here. So I'm supposed to drink a glass of this every 10 minutes until finished. You heard that right, sister? Oh, the graveyard, truthfully. Oh, it doesn't taste bad, but it literally just tastes like Gatorade. Okay, okay. It's just the aftermath that's about to come with this. Cup one is down. I just refilled and I did have to get a straw because it's just, I'm smelling it and the smell is horrible. Cup number three. Cup number four. And my belly is just feeling so big and like bloated right now. I'm on cup number five. And truthfully, I just feel like I'm gonna throw up. I have like the chills all over my body. Oh, it's getting so much harder to drink it just because my belly is so full. Okay, cup number six and I can see the end of the tunnel. The nausea is back. We have one more cup to do. Do you see this? No. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're just gonna slam it. all gone. It took me exactly an hour. It could have been much worse. All right, so it's been two and a half hours since 
I finished pitcher of stuff. I dealt with a lot of stomach cramping. I'm still dealing with like a little bit of cramping, but it was like really, really severe afterwards. I like laid on the couch like with a heating pad. It hasn't honestly like been that bad. I'm just like catching up on some work because I have a video going up tomorrow and obviously I'm gonna be like drugged up. So I'm not gonna be like able to do anything. So I'm doing work and stuff for the rest of the week right now while all this is going on, but I have to take an ensure. So right now I'm feeling really weak, very tired, nauseous. I got the vanilla flavor. They had vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. Okay, great. Gonna be sharing what I'm bringing in my surgery bag. This is literally just for like the waiting time of it. These two things I am bringing for the car ride home because I do normally get car sick and anesthesia it normally makes me very, very nauseous anyway. So I got some Altoids and then this is that little nausea relief I showed you earlier. Bringing my headphones and my phone, obviously, because I have heard that sometimes you're waiting for a really long time and I would love to watch like some YouTube videos or listen to music or something. I'm also bringing a charger. I am having my phone being fully charged. I know this is like a really short charger. I'm also bringing a magazine and a book because I also don't know how long I'm going to be waiting there and to keep my anxiety at bay. Then I'm bringing my eyeglass case because I am wearing glasses to the hospital and I have like some wipes and stuff like that too. My ID and my card, some hand sanitizer, and then also some lip balm because I know that I'm going to be super duper dry. I'm not going to bring any other medications or anything of the sort because if I need anything, I can just ask while I'm there. Now it is time to take my medicine. So I am taking gabapentin and then I'm also taking another thing to, this is so weird, but to ripen my cervix. Gonna be taking these two medicines and then going to sleep. I'm drinking some ginger ale right now. After midnight, I can't drink anything. So I'm like drinking anything and everything I want to right now because I know I'm going to like wish I drank more. And this ginger ale has really helped like settle my stomach a lot. Set my mind on fire. Put my soul at ease. It is morning of the surgery. It is 5.15 a.m. and we are heading to the hospital. I have on this comfy little set. It's from United Monograms. They sent it to me and honestly, it's like the comfiest thing I own. I still feel put together, which makes me feel better. Obviously, I have my glasses on and I put my hair in two French braids. I have my phone. I have my dyno. This is my belly before the surgery. So I'll have bandages and stuff like that when I get back. Just got my blood pressure taken, I'm about to get chained. Out of my comfies, <laughs> Will's be my videographer and support. <laughs> I've never been more attracted to you in my whole life. Lauren's currently waiting to, you know, head back and stuff. And uh, what you can't expect through this journey is severe anxiety. Like that stresses me out more than anything else. Breathing's a pain. I'd rather have a tube. It's like it's like using a straw to drink your drink instead of, you know, just drinking it out of the cup. Yeah? Who doesn't like a straw? Alright, an update. You can see the IV just given to her in her arm. Had some blood taken. At this point, you can definitely start to feel a little dizzy, a little nauseous, not up to par. This is why it's super important to bring an emotional support dyno with you. It will always help in any situation. <laughs> Just signed all the consent forms, have my IV, Will is being the best boyfriend ever. I'm going, how many incisions they said? Hmm? How many incisions? Three to five incisions. I'm like a little right now. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. 
they also are going to look at everything like get inside of everything they may like i signed a consent like if my appendix is like really bad they can take out my appendix I'm trying to remember everything she said it was a lot of information yeah um, but i'm still vibing with my tote bag <laughs> and my dino oh i feel so sick <laughs> I just came outside to get some fresh air. Lauren just went back to go get surgery done. So keep her in your prayers. Hope she does great. I think she will. I'm kind of nervous. Oh, I mean, it's kind of hard not to be. I think she's going to do great. And I'm going to be sitting out here for quite a long time. Probably will be about four hours or so until I get to see her. But we'll see. I keep you updated. Also, my lips are so dry. New song in my heart. Here she is. She has made it out of surgery. I'm watching the Ares tour. Watching the Ares tour. She is in full on recovery. How are you doing? Um, I'm okay. You okay? Did he tell you? Mm -hmm. Everything. So they said they um, got the endometrius out, got three cysts out. Three cysts? Three cysts. They got the pop out. Wow. Yeah. They said it was easy peasy. They said you did great. That you was a warrior Barbie. I mean, you look precious. Mm -hmm. so I'm glad you can, you can say that to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. This is drugged up for your Barbie right here. Well, Look at her. Precious. I'm starting to feel that gas in my shoulders. Are you? It's a weird feeling. So we are post-surgery and Lauren is sipping apple juice watching the Eros tour. Precious. Okay, hi friends. It is now almost 2 p.m. in the afternoon and I have to pee before I go because I put in a catheter. Looking at these apple juices, I'm a little loopy, not as bad as I was before. They found three cysts, three that they removed. They found an endometrial polyp inside of my uterus and then they found endometriosis also. So they removed everything, they cut everything out. The endometriosis was in two or three spots. I'm just trying to drink a lot so I can pee and I can go home. Watching the Ares tour, my pain is coming back, which sucks. Like, my belly button and my abdomen hurt. Okay, so it's 3 p.m. We're about to leave the hospital. Putting my clothes back on. I peed. Yay! <laughs> Will is grabbing everything. <laughs> Feels like my pain meds are not working. I got to move my body around, um, but I've basically just like been sipping liquids, soups. It's like in a lot, a lot of pain, but we're making it. 
This is what they look like right now. My belly is still very bloated. Um, this one hurts probably the most. And then this side, it's really, really painful. Like the inside, this like incision hurts more, but the inside of this hurts very bad. It is 6.30, the day after surgery. I am still in a lot of pain. Um, last night was definitely the worst for everything. I feel it just really gross too because I haven't been able to shower. But like everything's been going good. Like I've been getting up and walking. It just feels like very sharp pains. I was feeling like my organs move around yesterday, which was kind of weird. I'm so, so happy that I have answers now. And I feel like that's just like the main thing that's like getting me through this pain. It's like, I know I wasn't crazy. And like everything that these doctors told me. I'm sitting here with a heating pad on, obviously. Ow. Okay, um, literally my belly is like a bowling ball right now. <sighs> Oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. The postpartum underwear that I got for the surgery actually helps so much. So, so much. And I've been able to keep this heating pad on it pretty religiously. Like, even throughout the night. I will have... Ow. I will have this heating pad on. Will's mom came to come help with my recovery. I definitely underestimated this. I thought that I was going to be able to walk around and like move myself more, but I can't. Like to get up or sit up, I have to have assistance. Like I need like around the clock, like people caring for me and it makes me feel like so needy, but I've been staying really hydrated. Um, I've lost a little bit of my appetite, but I've really just been like trying to eat like really bland food. My doctor also prescribed me some nausea medicine because I've been getting really nauseous. They told me that today was going to be the worst hoping that tonight isn't going to be worse than last night because last night i was just weeping and bawling in pain it was like i had never experienced that pain before i literally like i'd gotten in the bed like will helped me in the bed and i was just like i couldn't even open my eyes like there was just like water like just pouring out of my eyes so it's like on the up and up i think i still feel like very puffy and floated we got lauren and her dino with some Panera mac and cheese. All right, so this is Lauren at a 7.5. We still got smiles out of her, but she's in pain. Day two comes in waves, but she tough as nails. I need like another pillow. Another pillow? We just took the like pads and tape off. Um, this is what it looks like. Still very, very bloated in my belly. Um, pain is really high right now. I also have like this like little abrasion. I don't really know if you can see it. Like this like red spot. That is where the tape was on my skin and it like peeled off. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. But I'm gonna be getting in the shower soon. Look up at the birds that sing songs that make me think of when we were young and didn't care. Man, those were the days. How'd we get so far from that place? All the happy promises we made and couldn't keep. Wonder why we didn't stay. I know this ain't easy. All right, it's been a few hours since my shower, and after the shower, it was really, really, really bad pain. Where they taped it up, I have like an abrasion from the tape, which made sense because I would always complain about how my skin feels on this side. I was like, my skin feels really bad. And it made sense when I started ripping off the tape, which if you're having the surgery, the tape after the surgery, like 48 hours after, is probably like one of the worst things you're gonna have to do. I used Vaseline to help get like, the tape off decided not to film it just because it was such a painful process and it took me a while to get all of them off since i have four incisions i had to get four like very large tape things off of my belly this is what my belly looks like right now um it doesn't have the tape on it anymore that's kind of like the abrasion I was telling y'all about. Um, but I have an incision here, 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 and then obviously one through my belly button. These postpartum underwear literally are life-saving. I've been doing good about moving around, moving my legs. I still feel like I'm hunched over, like I can't stand up straight yet. It just, just sucks sucks but like it's like my insides are like contracting right now if that makes any sense but i blow dried my hair so i'm feeling better put perfume on have some apple juice 
just having these cramps really bad right now. They just like come and go, kind of. Ugh. You have to believe me, cause I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. We can't look back and move forward. We've got to make so much more. All right. We are on day four, three, three or four over here. Three. Day three, and this is what you can expect if you go through this. Ice pack on forehead, weighted dino snugging on you with a Stanley full of a liquid IV. The nausea's horrible. It's gotten better though, within like the past 30 minutes, my nausea's better. Well, I think I've drank like two gallons of apple juice. That's like my weird obsession. Pain is so much better today. I'm still like obviously landing on the couch. I have my heating pad on. I don't go anywhere without my heating pad. I'm just like getting stir crazy. Like I want to film videos and I want to edit and I want to like go out and walk and I want to go get a coffee and I want to like go shop and I want to like go see my friends and go to dinner and like go to the grocery store and I can't. We're just trying not to get me to overdo things because I am like the biggest overdoer of my life. <laughs> I, like literally anyone knows they're like you're going to overdo it and you're going to regret it. So like they're making me take it slow which I hate. I literally hate it but I'm literally just waiting on Will's mom to come back and get me an apple juice. Started my period today so you can imagine how bad the cramps are and the pain is on top of everything. Also, I did shower yesterday and it was probably the worst pain I've ever felt. It was worse than the first shower. It felt like a knife going in and out of my belly. It was horrible, but I did tan my arms to make myself feel better. And uh, this is what my arm looks like from like the IV. Lauren has made her first walk outside the apartment. It is a long one. We're going about 0.2 miles. We just got some dinner with the pink shoes on. Primetime Lauren right here. And it'll still be fun. It's just... Hi everyone. Tomorrow will be a week since my endometriosis surgery. I will say that the pain, like the cramping you get from the surgery is different than period pain. And they're kind of similar, but when you're dealing with both of them, you can tell the difference between them. This has been like my emotional support heating pad. I have not left without my heating pad. Overall, I'm very pleased with how my recovery is going. I'm still having a lot of pain. I'm still on my, still on like all my pain medicine, pretty like scheduled out regularly, trying like to stay ahead of the pain, especially since now I'm on my period, I am obviously having that pain on top of it. I've been taking my nausea pill pretty regularly because I'm like a pretty nauseous person in general, so that has been an issue. I've also been taking turmeric over the counter to kind of help with like the inflammation, but right now like my stomach is still very bloated. It's the first day that I've also been by myself, so I had like a little bit of a mental breakdown because I've been so dependent on Will and Will's mom, and I'm gonna start crying if I think about it. Like if there's something that I couldn't do, they were always here to help me. So just being here by myself, it's a little scary. Um, I can't bend down all the way. So like I wanted to make toast this morning, but I couldn't bend down to get the toaster. So I had to get like cereal, it's just like little things like that, which I'm sure I'll start noticing things the longer I'm like in recovery, like here by myself while Will is at work all day. I've been having really bad nausea and cramping today for sure, but I've just been trying to stay hydrated. Um, I've been having a lot of pain in my right lower abdomen. And I'm not sure if that's where like the two cysts were that he removed. Move. I know that one for sure was on my left, but I had two other ones So I'm guessing that's where it is. But like that's where a lot of my pain is I've been getting really out of breath yesterday We tried walking for the first time and ever since that I've really been down for the count I really thought I could walk and I couldn't um, so I'm just going to continue walking around the apartment Getting a little bit stir crazy in here for sure overall like I can get up by myself now I can sit down by myself. I can like make little meals like I could probably like make a sandwich or or like heat up some soup, but like I could not like prepare and cook a meal right now personally. I feel like the main thing with the surgery is everyone's timeline and like recovery is different and everyone is going to have like a different surgery experience. Mine was the excision. So basically they cut out the endometriosis where there's also ablation. Ablation, according to like my research on it, is a little bit easier to recover from, but it doesn't get the root of the endometriosis where the 
excision does but i think like overall like if you or if someone you've known has had this surgery like just knowing that it's very different for every single person the endometriosis can be obviously like in any sort of organ so just like being patient with yourself and with others and knowing that two surgeries aren't the same and the recovery is not the same i am in no way like a hundred percent back but i'm feeling more like myself i'm just trying not to overdo it right now still like really taking things slow um which is driving me up the wall and disney plus isn't even working today which is so depressing because that's like where i watch dance moms i've also watched like the heiress tour but it's been hard it's been like mentally really taxing lately just like body image issues i'm still very bloated um the incision sites are now like starting to itch too which is not good because they still have the tape over it and so like when they itch i can't really do anything about it but pain is like a stabbing pain it's like someone is taking a knife and just like stabbing it also kind of feels like barbed wire at times and it's also like a runner's pain i will say like you know like if you like run a really long time and you start having like a pain in your side it's like that constantly down like in your lower abdomen mine personally has been in the right lower part of my abdomen I'm also like very very tired like the past two days i've been really tired and i'm guessing that's from my period i still haven't shared on social media like what's going on i think i may do that tomorrow but i'm just like going through moments of like pain right now okay to get up i have to prepare myself it is officially, I think, like a week and a half after surgery. I have my follow-up appointment tomorrow. I filmed what you're just watching yesterday, thinking that I wasn't going to be able to film a little bit and go ahead and put it in today's video. You're at the post-surgery appointment a couple weeks later, and she is back in the paint gown, ladies and gents. I'm feeling better. <laughs> but this is about to hurt, I think. This is about to hurt. Uh-huh. So I just got done at my follow-up appointments and all good news, they did not find any cancer. They did say that they do follow endo patients the same way they kind of follow cancer patients, just like following me very closely, making sure I'm coming up follow-up appointments every six months to make sure that everything is looking good. Every six months, they will be checking for polyps and cysts um, to make sure that everything is going good. I also got told that the next couple of my periods, I'll still be experiencing some cramping and some pain, but then after that, I should be having regular periods if I don't that I need to go back to him, which is so crazy because I've never had a regular period in my life ever. I talked more about that in my endometriosis story that's on my channel. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can actually have a regular period. I was like, I literally looked around the room and I was like, y'all, you don't know like what this means to me. They also took off the tape, so I'm going to be showing you the incisions. They hurt a little bit right now. This is what they look like. So they're not that bad. One through my belly button, right? This one hurts the most right now. And then this one. So we are in the healing process. He said that I can start gradually getting back in into my normal routine. I can't do like any heavy workouts or anything until like two weeks from now, I think. But like I can start walking more and like I can start like lifting a little bit heavier of things. I did ask about endo coming back and he said that the only way obviously that they'll know if the endo comes back is if they do another surgery, which hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't have to do that. He said that once I do start trying to have a baby at some point in my life, if I am having infertility issues, that's when they would probably want to do another surgery just to go back in, see what's going on, see if there's like any more endo that like came back um, and like remove anything that's the issue. So that's kind of the update of the follow-up appointment. Everything is good. Thank you for your prayers. It's going so good. Like I'm just feeling like, oh, like I just want to like celebrate. Like I'm just so excited and happy. Um, The recovery, truly looking back on it, I am just so glad I did it. I did start my period obviously in the middle of my recovery and that was a little difficult. I was bleeding very, very heavily. I was passing a lot of blood clots, but my period wasn't as severe as a lot of people were making it seem online. So to give you like a peace of mind, my period personally was not that bad. The outpouring love and just like kindness that I have received on social media since sharing my journey has just been so seen and I'm just so grateful. Like if I haven't responded back to your comment or DM, it's not that I haven't seen it. A lot of them I've seen, it's just very, it's very overwhelming. This is something that I have kept to myself for so many years because I felt just so like ashamed and alone. And so I think that by posting this video and my story on my channel, I'm trying to break that stigma because so many women don't want to talk about their health issues, especially when it comes to reproductive health and things that women only face. And it breaks my heart knowing how many of you have actually had a very 
very similar story to mine with endometriosis. I would be glad to share my doctor that I used in New York City. If anyone wants to message me on Instagram, I am happy to like refer you there. It has been just all good things. I am starting to feel like myself again. You can probably tell like in this video, like I'm feeling more like myself. Still have not been able to go outside. I've been a hermit. I haven't been able to like walk really long distances. I'm still getting like really winded. Still having the stabbing pains, especially through my incisions and my belly button really severe. It's just like, it's just not lasting as long as it was. I'm going to embrace the scars all throughout the summer with my bikinis on. It is something that I am just like so proud of. It was something that I was so nervous about, but honestly, it's just a part of my story. It's a part of who I am. And I am just so thankful for this platform that I'm given where I can, if I could just help one girl, it would be so worth it. So maybe this will encourage you to open up, speak more openly about it. This is not something that we should be ashamed of at all. Us Barbies, we need to stick together. We need to care about our health. We need to talk about things that may be uncomfortable. Thank you guys so much for lasting through this video. I know that it was a lot going on. I brought you through a lot of like different highs and lows. I just want to thank you guys so, so much from the bottom of my heart. I love you all so, so much. If you've made it to this part of the video, go ahead and comment down the yellow heart emoji as well as like another emoji. Surprise me. Yellow heart emoji and one other one of your choosing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to join the family, you can click that subscribe button also. This week we'll be continuing kind of like my endometriosis journey on my YouTube channel just because I have not been up to good health to actually be able to film anything else. Like I said, this is the first day that I've actually been like fully like myself. I've been able to walk longer around the apartment, stand longer in the apartment. So Thursday's video is going to be a recovery day in my life. So maybe if you're going through the same thing, maybe you're in recovery, maybe you have this scheduled and you want to get kind of more of an insight, that video is going up on Thursday and hopefully, fingers crossed, that everything goes good. My regular content will resume next week. But I love you guys so, so much and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye.